Hello friends, my name is Real Emil and welcome to the Forza 7 debut of Forza Top Gear Laps and the start of Season 5. If you've never seen this series before, the way it works is very simple. Each episode I take a number of cars and chuck them around the Top Gear track for 6 laps, after which I take the best time and put it onto our leaderboard to see how each car stacks up to one another. In this first episode we are going to be setting some benchmarks with various random cars I had lying around my garage because, to be honest with you, I don't have that many interesting cars in this game yet. Let's go ahead and kick off Season 5 then with the 2011 McLaren 12C, 592 horsepower, 442 foot-pound of torque, 3000 and 31 pounds of weight. A pretty interesting car to start us off because of course the 12C was developed here at the Top Gear track, that's where McLaren's uh, testing grounds were, so it should be pretty interesting. Also you can sort of take note while this car is going around the course as to all the differences from this course between Forza Motorsport 6 and this game. Uh, it's mainly just the fact the runoff areas are a lot bigger in this game now, which is really nice. Uh, it feels a lot wider of a track, which, to be fair, most tracks in Forza Motorsport 7 actually do feel wider than they did in 6. Not quite sure why that is, but that is sort of the feeling I get, at least. Uh, but yeah, Top Gear definitely has a little bit more runoff area. You can make a few more mistakes. It's most noticeable through the follow-through, because you actually do get to go into the gutter now, which is quite nice, because before... Uh, it was really tricky, the cars would go onto the grass and slide out. You'll also notice a few tyre walls have gone missing as well, which is nice. It makes the track look a bit more cleaner. The 12C's driving impression-wise, it's very good. Uh, it is a very good handling supercar, this one. This one, if you're going to start out with a supercar, you know, maybe you never played a Forza before and need a supercar to sort of sink your teeth into, the 12C really is a very, very good beginner car. It will teach you all you need to know about how a supercar drive, and yeah, I do quite like the 12C. Next up, we have the 2011 Ferrari FF, 651 horsepower, 495 foot-pounds of torque, 4,145 pounds of weight. It is the most powerful car here today. It's also the torquiest. I've tried to get a good mix of cars in this first sort of benchmarking episode, so you've got all sorts of drivetrains, car configurations, so on and so forth. I thought the FF would be interesting because it is a four-wheel drive car, and it is a Ferrari, although it does turn into rear-wheel drive uh, as you go up the gears, although... We will never feel that around this course because it doesn't really have any corners fast enough to be in fifth gear, which is when the FF engages full time uh, rear wheel drive. Yeah, uh, it's a weird car, the FF. It's also very hard to look at. I'm quite happy the GT4 Luso looks a lot better. As far as this one drives, it's decent enough. You can feel the weight of it. You can also feel the understeer. There's quite a lot of understeer here, which means I'll take a good advantage of this sort of new guttering that we get through the follow through which is always very nice. But yeah, uh, Top Gear Track's actually really good, uh, is a really good test of cars to be honest with you. Uh, while it does seem like a bit of a gimmicky track to actually race uh, driver cars around and so on, uh, as an actual testing ground it's very good because you do need a good mix of uh, you know straight line speed and handling to really do well around this course. And next up we have the 2010 Maserati Gran Turismo S. 433 horsepower, 361 foot-pound of torque, 4,146 pounds of weight. Interestingly enough, this is the heaviest car here today by one pound. One pound. It is slightly heavier than the Ferrari FF, which is quite weird considering that's a four-wheel drive V12 Gran Tora, and this is a Gran Tora with a V8. Although, admittedly, the Gran Turismo is an extremely big car, uh, as in it's surprisingly big. It, I'm not a huge fan of the Gran Turismo, I've got to be honest. I much prefer its sort of sister car, the Alpha 8C. Yeah, we'll see that go around the track later on. The GTS, to be honest with you, driving-wise, it's also not hugely exciting either. It's really not as quick as you'd think a car like this would be. Admittedly, this car is quite old now, and it, again, as I mentioned, it is quite heavy and long and so on. But you'd expect a lot more performance from a Maserati, and it just doesn't really move all that quickly. Uh, it sort of has performance about on par with a modern supercar like a Nissan 370Z or something, which, yeah, it, it's not quite as quick as maybe you'd want it to be, which is a little bit of a shame. I'd kind of like it if they put the MC Stradale in this game. I think, you know, that would be a fun car to chuck around here. But uh, the standard Gran Turismo S, I mean, it's fun. Oh, it's a good car, certainly. Like, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. It's just not hugely fast. Next up, we have the 2000 Ford Mustang SVT Cobra R, some proper American muscle. 385 horsepower, 385 foot-pound of torque, 3,589 pounds of weight. Yeah, uh, the SVT Cobra R, rather mental-looking muscle car as well, with its sort of ground effects kit and its silly rear wing. I do quite like it, though. I really like the, uh, the side-mounted tailpipes and the fact it sounds like a stabbed pig 
it is a proper muscle car, this, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite fond of the SN95 Mustangs. I know they're not to everyone's taste, but I do quite like them. Uh, interestingly enough as well, the Cobra R, driving-wise, it is actually pretty good. It's no way near as bad as you'd expect. Uh, it's pretty good considering its classification. Uh, if I'm being perfectly honest, I kind of think this drives a little bit nicer than that Maserati did. Uh, which is weird to say. You can sort of feel weight in this car, which is kind of ironic considering it only weighs uh, just under 3,600 pounds. Uh, so yeah, you can feel a bit of weight in this vehicle, but uh, you know, for a big old American bruiser, it's a pretty nice car to drive. Uh, yeah, it's sort of grown on me a little bit, the uh, the Mustang Cobra R. You can also get this car for free from a showcase event, which also helps, so yeah, you can actually experience this car for yourself uh, for the low, low price of absolutely bloody nothing. But yeah, a solid enough car, I actually really enjoyed driving this. Next up, we have some classic JDM for you. This is the 1990 Mazda Savannah RX-7. 200 horsepower, 196 foot-pound of torque, 2,981 pounds of weight. One cool feature of this track here in Forza Motorsport 7 is every car has its lights on, which means we get to see the mighty pop-up headlights on cars that have pop-up headlights, which is great. Uh, in the old track, the cars had their lights on, but if it was a pop-up car, for whatever reason, the pop-ups weren't on. Uh, but now we have the mighty pop-up, so we get to see the RX-7 Savannah in all of its pop-up glory. Isn't it glorious? Yes, you can also see it leaning quite badly there, because, uh, yeah, this is a 1990s car. This is the oldest one we have here. And uh, you can certainly feel that behind the wheel. This car does like a good lean. Uh, it's not quick. There is no nice way to say that. This is not a quick car to drive. It kind of looks quick. It looks quite quick going around here now that I see it now, although that mostly because it's just terrifying because it's sort of gripping onto the road. I will say for it, uh, it's solid and it's a lot of fun. Out of all the cars here today, this is the most fun car to drive. Uh, yeah, it's sort of got a little bit of the Mark 1 Golf charm. I've spoke about the Mark 1 Golf uh, before multiple times uh, during the various incarnations of the of this series. Uh, you know, the Mark 1 Golf GTI is a very fun car to drive. It's not very quick at all, but it's sort of got the leany suspension. It's got, like, fun steering. It's a fun car to drive, and the FC's got a little bit of that. It is a fun car, and it's got a lot of potential if you wanted to build on it as well, which is quite nice. Next up, we have the 2010 Renault Megane RS250. 250 horsepower, as the name would suggest. 251 foot-pound of torque, 3,058 pounds of weight. This is our hot hatch for the day. Not a huge fan of the uh, the third gen Renault Megans, uh, I mean Renault Megans in general aren't particularly interesting. If you're asking for my favourite one, probably the second gen, even then I wasn't a huge fan of the massive arse on end on that thing, but uh, there you go, the new Megan actually looks pretty cool. Uh, and that should be interesting to see if we get that in Forza, because that of course has a uh, 300 horsepower and four wheel steering I think, so yeah, that should be an interesting car to chuck around here. Uh, but the old RS250 does have a reputation for being a pretty good car around a track. And yeah, it's driving capabilities, it is decent to drive, it is good, uh, you know, there's no denying that, it is still a capable hot hatch, even though it is like seven years old now, it is still pretty capable, it can still keep up with them. It's not very much fun though, which is sort of what I'd want from a hot hatch, I kind of like having a little bit of fun with a hot hatch, and this, just for my money, it isn't as fun as a Focus ST or even an Astra VXR. Uh, is a little bit more fun than the Megane, so uh, yeah, I mean, if you want just like basic straight on hot hatch, you know, a no frills hot hatch, the Megane is pretty good, but uh, you know, for my money, I'd to go take a look at the Focus ST, go take a look at the Astro, if you want something uh, with a lot less fun, but you know, as quick as possible, the Focus RS is also there as well. Finally today, we have the 2001 Acura Integra Type R, 195 horsepower, 130 foot-pound torque, 2,639 pounds of weight. It is the least powerful, the least torquey by far, and the lightest car we have here today. The uh, the good old Integra Type R, this of course, is the North American version that had that sort of weird circular headlight face. A lot of people like this style of Integra, I sort of, if I think Integra, I do sort of think of this car, so I guess uh, that's a good thing. I, I mean, I'm not really a fan of these sort of older Integras, I much prefer the uh, DC5 generation, that sort of, uh, the Integra I like the most, but uh, yeah, you know, this isn't a bad car. Uh, it's a very, very solid car, uh, there's no doubt in that to drive. It is, you know, there is a reason people use these things as a base for tuners, and you can do quite a lot with this, I'd imagine. 
Uh, it'd be a pretty solid front-wheel drive handling car as well. Although, for that, I'd probably still go with the Civic Type R. The one thing this car definitely needs if you want to use it, it needs speed. It needs power. Uh, it, it hasn't got a lot of power. Uh, you know, I mean, 130 foot-pound of torque really isn't enough. 195 horsepower. Okay, I mean, that's about what the Savannah RX-7 had, but that had a lot more torque. And it felt a lot quicker in a straight line, at least. Uh, and But through the corners, I mean, this will run ring is around the Savannah, so uh, there you go. Anyways, on to the leaderboard then, and the 12C is the fastest car we've currently had with a 115.080, which instantly secures it a spot at the top. As, uh, as I said before, you know, the McLaren 12C has always been a very fast car around here, so that's pretty good. Ferrari FF goes into second with a 118.197, which is a pretty darn good time. Uh, we've got a bit of an upset now for third and fourth. In third place, we have the Ford Mustang SVT Cobra R with 123.216. It does beat out the Maserati Gran Turismo that goes into fourth with 123.235. Really not very much between those cars, but there you go. Uh, the Renault Megane RS250 goes into fifth with 127.414. Just behind it is the Acura Integra in sixth with a 128.539. And to round out the pack, the Mazda Savannah RX-7 with a 130. 0.394, so are those cars falling about where we assumed they would. Anyways, I was going to compare the times between the times that I got in Forza Motorsport 6 and now the ones that I just got in Forza Motorsport 7, but to be brutally honest, there isn't a huge difference. At absolute max, it's give or take about half a second. Uh, the Mustang was slightly quicker than it was in Forza Motorsport 6, the Maserati was slightly slower. Honestly, that could be chucked up to various minor factors, so, I mean, time-wise, the best conclusion is it is literally about the same between 6 and 7. There really isn't a whole lot of difference there, but uh, there you go. Anyways, that is the benchmarks chucked around the Forza Top Gear laps series. I hope you enjoyed this first episode. Uh, next time, not quite sure what we're going to look at. As always, feel free to leave suggestions for themes and cars you'd like to see in the comment section below. But that is it from me today. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, a farewell.